Welcome to Ronnie's Garage. Uh, we are holding Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California's uh, monthly tech meet. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Silver Cloud 3. We're going to be resealing the steering ram up at the front and we'll be looking the car over for numerous other leaks that I'm sure we can find. Okay, so now use the fiber washer, which is the outside diameter of the fiber washer is about the same diameter as that smaller diameter inside. So what that's going to do is when you put the steel washer on it, which is the outside diameter is the same as the bigger one, in theory it's going to push it all the way down and then force it a little bit more so that that fiber washer compresses that rubber thing. Okay, put that on. And then this scraper here sets up. And it sets up above this plate. So when you're putting the plate back on, this thing right here, and you're tightening your screws, you're going to do two things. You're going to pull this inner sleeve up to the snap ring and hopefully it'll lock in place. You've got to make sure it locks in place. And then, once that happens, you tighten the screws and it's going to compress this brass thing. So it does two things when you tighten that up. This washer has a flat side and it has a step down side. Okay, so the flat side goes down. And the step down side goes up, and then this it's supposed to fit into there, not like this. Okay, so when you're tightening the screws, you're pulling first of all this inner housing up to the snap ring till it locks, and then you're an additional squeeze on that to keep the seal from rocking and moving around and hopefully compress it a bit. So when you put in the circlip, you, you put it so the ends are around the hole? I put it, I put it so that it overlaps the hole, just one end, just a little bit. Ah, so you can push in and... So I can push in and hook it real easy. Right. Sometimes, if they've been in there a long time, they, um, they don't want to come out. Thanks for reminding me, by the way, Brock. I left it out. I would have figured it out. And I dumped fluid all over. Or I saw that part on the bench still. That's why it's always good to have a clean bench before you start. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't have no parts up there. <laughs> Except for the old ones, or ones that needed replacing. Now, we should be able to watch it come up. And uh, I cannot see without my glasses. Okay, you can see the snap ring in there if you look in that hole. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, and there. A tiny little hole. Tightening the screws is actually pulling the slug back up, right? Right. Now, I didn't feel comfortable when I tightened those. I just wanted to work it to make sure it worked. So I'm going to pull this plate off again to make sure that snap ring is in the right place. Because I have had them pop up out of the groove. And this is tight, but they still, it still won't fly out of there. So. I, I can see in there, it's still down in the groove. If it popped out, it'd be up next to the house. So. If you want to look in there, but the snap ring is down below. It's down below, down to this level. Nut, lock nut that goes back on. 
you can really see the difference in colors there. So. What's the torque spec on the screws? What size is that screw? Number eight? <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This fitting here is a pipe. It's got quarter inch pipe on this side and like I said tubing on this side. So this has to have some sort of sealer on it. Uh, you can use RTV or you can use pipe tape. Now a lot of people hate this stuff because they don't use it right. They'll put it on there and they'll wrap it around and then screw it in and then this crap gets in the system. Don't do that. If you don't want it to get into the system, if you're screwing it in, it's going to push its way. It's going to want to stay. Don't go so deep. So I always wrap in the direction of the screw in. So I don't go to the end because I don't need the ceiling there. And another thing you've got to be careful of, and I've seen it before, it's tapered. So if you keep tightening it, it's going to break whatever it's screwing into. And I've seen these crack here before. Now, I don't know if it's because when you're putting it in or when you're tightening that fitting without holding this on the back side for the tubing fitting. In my opinion, it's when, because they don't hold this and it keeps leaking and they keep trying to tighten it and it's leaking. It's stupid. That's my opinion. There are two fittings. Hold, hold the bottom ones. This doesn't have to be that tight. All you need to do is crush that seal, right? It's pipe tape. So I don't know the torque spec on that either, but uh, it's not real tight. The key is it doesn't have to be real tight. If you got that, those threads all sealed up, it shouldn't move. But like I was saying, if you're, t if you're tightening that other fitting on here, and you get to the point where that fitting's bottomed out and you tighten it some more, that hose is going to make it back off in here. And then that's going to leak. So when you're tightening a tubing fitting, you always use both. You hold the bottom one, don't let it move, and then tighten this until it gets its fresh feel. All right? If you're restoring a car, then you're going to want to paint this before you do it. And you want to have it properly prepped, primed, painted, dried for days, right? And maybe a little color sand and polish. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would think so because you know suspension that white glove, part. Uh, that yeah. white glove inspection. That white glove inspection. Okay, so let's look at this plate here, and we want this to be the vertical position. Okay. So you got this is just say this is at vertical, and then you got an angle coming up here. If this wasn't bent, then this would be at the same angle as the bottom part. And as you can see, it's a little twisted that way, right? It's not quite. So that's, that's where I'm going to straighten it real quick. And it's not rocket science. I'm just going to take it here and, and I'll give it. That's pretty close. Now it, it's got a little bit better of an angle. It's got more of that angle. And it was pretty obvious. You could see it was dipped in there. Uh, some of these get pretty bent. Uh, and even worse yet, the bracket on top gets pushed up. So normally, if you straighten this out and it's not too bent on the top, you can use the washers to get that ram to get your clearance if you want without having to get into a whole reconstruction thing. So I think this should be fine for us. All right, so now we've got to, I always like to start the threads on the ram at this point because I can move this around and it's a lot easier. So right now I'm just screwing it on here. I'm just getting it started. So yeah, basically getting up. it started yeah. and now I've got to push this in so I can get to this, this fitting to that hole. All right, here we go. Um, now I can put this plate back on. So I'm going to put one washer on the bottom. This has three washers that were between here. And since we want more clearance on the top, I'm going to put two washers on top. One washer underneath. And I'm going to start there. What I'm trying to do 
is this upper bracket is welded to the frame. That's why you, you hope it's not bent too bad. If it is, then what I've done in the past is uh, taken a slide hammer and put it up through this hole. Boom, boom, bring it down. What I'm trying now, I'm trying to line up that hole. And using my wrench as a pry bar. <laughs> there we go. I'll stay. You need a hand holding that? No? No. Thank you.